All right, um, so today's topic is going to be HPC system and software testing uh, via build test. Uh, my name is Shazeb Siddiqui. I'm here uh, from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, and I also have my colleague Aditya Kavalur. And today we'll be giving you uh, an overview of build tests and also testing efforts. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so first we'll talk about um, build tests. It's a testing framework uh, that helps actually build and execute tests uh, on your HPC systems. Um, it, in build tests, you will write tests in uh, YAML syntax, uh, and these um, tests are called build specs. And in build tests, you will process um, this into what's called um, it will process them into shell scripts and run them on your system. Um, these build specs are actually validated with JSON schema. And in build tests, you can run these tests locally or via batch and scheduler. We support Slurm, LSF, PBS, and Cobalt. The framework is implemented in Python and it's available on GitHub. Um, if you want to get started, you can just install, uh, just git clone. Um, and just source the setup script. Um, and, you know, the documentation is on the right. So, so just to give you a project summary, uh, there's a total of 32 releases. The latest release is uh, version 0.95, uh, which added support for PBS. Um, the development started in uh, February 2017, and initially it was a Bash program. It converted into Python, and uh, we also um, provide release updates in the change log. Um, it's distributed as MIT, uh, and the documentation is hosted via Sphinx, um, and it's hosted on the Read the Docs platform. Uh, just some other notable changes, um, you know, in version 08, we introduced JSON schema into the framework and added Slurm and LSF. Uh, version 091, we added Cobalt support. Um, and then, you know, the latest version, we added PDS. So we want to cover some of the design goals of uh, when we're, um, you know, when we're designing the framework. So first, we wanted to perform component level testing, you know, for both the system and software stack. We want to provide a standard, you know, template for writing tests and it, make it easier for users to, um, you know, actually develop tests. So we pick the YAML because it's, it's very easy to learn. Um, also, we want to have a framework that abstracts the low level system configuration and automate the build and execution of the test. Because that's, um, um, we don't want to have um, folks uh, write tests uh, like shell script manually. We should have a framework that automates this. And finally, we wanted to have a framework that supports local and batch submission. Because a batch scheduler is, is um, you know, key because all the tests have to go through the scheduler in order to run. You won't run them on your login nodes. So first we'll talk about some terminology in, in build tests. Uh, first is build spec. This is the YAML file that build test interprets from building and running a test. There is a global schema that's uh, used to validate the build spec. It, it basically validates the top level structure of the build spec. And um, we also have a subschema that validates the uh, instance of the test in the build spec. So, in a build spec, you can have multiple test uh, declarations, and each of them are validated with one subschema defined by a type field. And we'll, and we'll talk about this. Um, and these subschemas are actually versioned. And we also have uh, executors, which are responsible for running the test. And these executors are like typically defined in your uh, configuration file. And think of these executors as like a local executor that runs tests locally, uh, or it could be a Slurm executor, PBS, or and each of those executors map to a, like a queue um, in your system. So, um, 
you know, the build test relies on JSON schema. So one of the things that we provide is uh, schema documentation. Uh, this is available on build test, uh, build testers, uh, github.io. Uh, it's hosted as um, markdown pages and like kind of through GitHub pages. And the idea is to expose the schemas uh, and also um, the like the schema documentation that's translated into, uh, into markdown pages. We use a, um, a workflow called JSON schema to markdown, which basically translates your schema into markdown pages that you can see on the right is an example of um, one of the compiler schema uh, documentation and it shows you the, the schema properties, the uh, type, the required field, and even a description of each of the fields. So just give you a preview of build test. Um, it is um, composed of um, like subcommands. So build test uh, build is what you use to build your uh, build specs. So you can build by a single file using dash B. It could be a file or a directory. If it's a directory, it will recursively traverse all the YAML files. You can spend, specify a dash B multiple times. Um, you can also exclude uh, a file using dash x. Uh, we can also build by tags. So uh, dash dash tags is what allows you to uh, basically group tests by uh, a known classification like tag name like network and run them together. And then you can also um, you know mix and match between the dash b, uh, the dash tags, and we can also build by executors. We also have commands for reporting. Uh, so once you run the test, you can do build test report. You can filter the report file. Uh, we can also uh, retrieve the oldest and latest record. And we also have a command called build test build spec find, which actually is used to uh, query the build spec cache. And it shows you like what, what are the tests available um, that, you, that are currently loaded in the cache and you can actually query them. Uh, you can find all the tags and the executors, and you can also filter and format that cache. So now we'll talk about um, the general pipeline for building a build spec that goes through um, generally a five stage pipeline. Uh, first, it will discover the build specs. Based on the search criteria, it could be a file, a directory, tags, or an executor. Next, it will parse the build spec with the JSON schema. Then it will build the test uh, using the, uh, basically taking the YAML file and generating a shell script. Then we will actually run the test. So it, it will have to find the appropriate executor and run it. So it could be local or batch executor and basically get a return code, um, the output and error file. And finally we update a report uh, with the test results and any kind of associated metadata with the test. So that's typically um, what happens for every build. Now we'll talk about uh, one of the builds. Um, so what it looks like, build test build, dash B, and then we have one of this file. So it's just a single file build. Um, we have one discovered build spec. Um, and you can see in the first stage, we discover the build specs, then we parse them with the appropriate schema. And this example is using the script version 1.0 schema. Then we'll actually build the task, which is um, it, it, it generates a shell script. It will tell you the name of the test and unique ID uh, and the corresponding uh, path to the shell script. Finally, we will run the test and using the executor and give you a status and a return code. And that's typically what it looks like. And then you'll finally get an output uh, like log file and a summary of the test results. You can also build by tags. And the way tags work is you specify a name. So let's say Python, and it will discover the build specs. And I found that there were two build, um, build spec files that had the, the Python tag. Within that, there were two tests, so circle area and Python hello. And you can see the tags that were associated with it and it will generate the tests Likewise. So 
now we'll talk about how the parsing works. Um, you know, less, this is after discovery. Uh, for every build spec that's, val um, you know, it, it, it's validated with the global schema and also one of the sub schemas. So let's let's take a look at one of these input build specs that we have. Um, this is a basically a hello world example. Uh, what happens is this um, build spec will get validated with the global schema. It picks up the version, um, the build spec and maintainers, these are required properties. Uh, actually maintainers is an optional. You can see on the left is the JSON schema for global schema. Um, and you know, the required properties. It will validate the top level structure and then the inner level structure of the test, which is where build specs um, section is, you define one or more tests. So the name of the test is hello world. And within it, you have a type field that tells you the lookup for the, uh, the sub schema. So script version 1.0 is the schema and it will validate that um, test section. And, and you can have multiple tests within the build spec. And we'll, we'll see that. So now we'll talk about the script schema. This is um, the build test schema that allows us to write uh, shell script kind of tests. So basically, uh, this could be you know, bash sh or csh. Um, so, so we'll talk about this. This is an example test that tests the system D default target. Um, that's the name of the test. So we talked about version and build specs. Um, you know, the version is the schema version. Uh, build specs is declaration of one or more tests. Uh, within the test, you have to define um, three required properties. One is type, the second is run, and the third is executed. And you can see it in the in the um, schema definition below. The executor is the name of the executor used to run your test. So these are typically defined in your configuration file. Uh, the type is obvious. Uh, this is using the script schema. Uh, we can define tags. Uh, it's a list of keywords. So if you recall in the previous two slides when we did build test build with tags, um, if you wanted to build this tag, this test, you would just use system, right? Uh, you can define multiple tags. You can have a description of the test and then the run is the actual content of the test. Uh, this is just testing them. Basically multi-user target is the default target, which generally is. Um, if it is, it will exit zero. If it isn't, then it exit one. Um, we can also do return code matching. So by default, uh, return code zero is a pass in build test. Uh, and you know you can have different return codes. Uh, for instance, you wanna test uh, like exit failures. So this is a, an example of four different tests we have in our build spec section, exit one fail, exit one pass, uh, return code list mismatch and return code int match. Uh, you can see the test, the way that they're structured is um, the first test is gonna fail because we run exit one, okay? So th that should be pretty clear. In the run section is what actually is run. And, and you can see in the output, uh, the return code is a fail. Now we will say, I wanna run the same test, but uh, I want return code one to match, right? So we can define a section under status and it's a, one of the key words is return code, and it could be a list, right? And you can have a list of return codes to match. In this third example, we do exit two, and just to show you that it doesn't match in the list because we're expecting one or three, so it fails. And, and the last test just highlights that the return code could also be an integer or a list, right? So we exit on 128, which matches the 128, so it passes. We can also customize the shell for the uh, for how the test is going to be run. So you can customize the shell and the shell options. By default, it's bin bash. The uh, and what this does is the shell property changes how the run section works. So if you want to run, like for instance, uh, in sh or csh or, or zsh, you know, just change the shell. You can see in the output on this test on the right, 
we can change the shell to bin bash, bin sh, bash, or sh. Uh, if you take a look in the middle is the, is the uh, definition of the shell property. And there is a regular expression that tells you all the available uh, keywords for this. So, you know, we support also, you know, ZSH, TCSH. So depending on what you do in the shell, you can actually write uh, different types of tests. Uh, and, and just to highlight, we can also use Python. So the run section can be used to run Python code uh, if, you, if you want to. Uh, this is just a simple area of a circle, right? Um, the way it's set up is when you're writing Python code, uh, you know, you, you have to be uh, mindful of the indentation. So, uh, you know, just uh, everything two spaces onward is, is, is how it works, right? Uh, certainly, it's good for writing small Python codes, but when you're writing like, like a whole Python like module that you have like hundreds of lines of code, it may be easier just to write a Python code and then just use the shell executor to run it. Okay. So now, so our, in our previous slides, we were talking about the scripts, and then now we'll talk about the other schema that we have is the compiler schema, and this schema is used for a compilation of code uh, using basic compilers to build your application. And in order to use this schema, you have to change the type field to compiler. On the top right is the schema definition of the compiler schema. It has four required properties, the type, source, compilers, and executor. So since we're building an app, uh, like some kind of application, uh, you know, we, we, we need a source file. Uh, so this is an example of a vector edition uh, using GNU compiler. The test name is called vector add GNU. And the executor is still the same thing, you know, the, the one responsible for running the test. Now we'll introduce the compilers block. This is the start of compilers uh, declaration where you define the compilers to use. Uh, and it's a regular expression. So in the name, we can specify which compilers to use. So I, I say uh, built-in anything that starts with built-in GCC or GCC. The default is a section organized by compiler group. So we can say GCC. Uh, I know that all three of these compilers are GCC. And what it will do is um, all three compilers will run with the dash F open ECC, SCC flags and LD flags dash LM. You can actually see the compilers uh, using build test config compilers. And I'll show you the output. Uh, just diving more deeper into the configuration file and how you can override. So these three compilers are defined uh, in this YAML file. They start with this compilers block. Uh, within compiler, we can define a group like say GCC and say built-in GCC, uh, GCC 9, GCC 10, and specify the modules if you want. Um, you can also specify the path uh, to the, you know, the C, Fortran and uh, C++ wrapper. In this example on the right, it just shows you a slightly different example, but it's a hello world C, um, but we're gonna override compiler um, flags. So, you know, in the default GCC, um, we said the default is going to be dash show one, but we can override configuration using config um, property and specify a named compiler uh, based on your compilers in your configuration and say, let's say GCC nine is going to use dash show two, GCC 10 is going to use dash show three. So the way this test will look like is built in GCC will use dash show one and the other two will use dash show two and dash show three. So uh, that, that could be useful if you need uh, to run the same code with different com configurations based on compilers. So now we'll talk about uh, just expanding on that same example, how we can do multi-compiler tests. This is an example of uh, OpenMP reduction example uh, using GCC, Intel, and Cray compiler, we define, um, so, you know, we can define tags, let's say OpenMP. Uh, the, the key to this is, um, so our regular expression is um, 
you know, picks up basically anything that starts with GCC, Intel, or Progent, right? Um, this is how the compilers are kind of like defined uh, at Cori. Uh, and in our default section, we can also add other properties. Um, like for instance, all is a keyword that is inherited for all compilers. So you can say, let's, um, you know, declare environment variables. Let's say om pinam press to four, right? Now uh, this will be defined in all the compilers. We can, uh, since it's OpenMP code, uh, the open a, OpenMP flag is going to be different. So for GCC is dash f open MP, Intel is dash q open MP, and Cray is dash h OMP. And obviously you can override any of this in the config section. You can see in the output, uh, this reduction test was run with, uh, it was probably about 25 different tests. Uh, with the compilers, you know, GCC, Proven, and Intel. So uh, it's pretty cool for having a single test uh, run across multiple compilers. We also support schedulers. So uh, the Slurm, LSF, Cobalt, and PBS. The way these work is um, there are keyword um, fields like sbatch, bsub, Cobalt, and PBS that map to the uh, scheduler directives. And these are available both in the script and compiler scheme. So if you want to say, uh, let's say S batch, like dash T for time, C for Haswell, and dash N for number of nodes, uh, they get automatically injected into the, to the test with the S batch directives. And uh, this just shows you on the right what it looks like. You know, when you're building a test, it will actually submit the job, pull the result once the job is complete. Um, it will finish and then give you the output. And some of it, some of this, we'll actually talk about in the in the, uh, the demo that we'll have. We also have uh, scheduler agnostic configuration using uh, batch property. What this allows us to do is write uh, configure um, a build spec with um, kind of scheduler directives that can be kind of shared across different. Uh, plus uh, schedulers. And, and what this allows us to do is, um, the way this is implemented is we, we, we implement a subset of the scheduler options that are shared between these schedulers. And on the right is the, uh, the available batch properties. So if you see in the field, uh, these are all available uh, keywords within the batch key. So let's say node count is one and slurm is dash nodes in LSF is dash N nodes, PBS is dash L nodes, and COBOL is dash dash node count. If there is an option that's not available, then it will just be skipped. And the idea is that it, it, it's trying to help, um, you know, find common uh, options between the schedulers and, you know, be able to write uh, a configuration that can be kind of, you know, ported between schedulers. Uh, you can mix and match the batch with the S batch if you want, uh, or, or any of the other schedulers. So now we'll talk about uh, some other features um, in build test. So build spec uh, find is, uh, is the command you filter and format the build spec. We can filter uh, using the dash dash filter option. So looking on the top right example, Let's say I want to find all tests that had the tag fail. And it finds that there was two tests within it. You can also format the, uh, the columns of the table using format option. Uh, so same example, I say, I want to only find, I, I want to fill, uh, format this by the name and the tags. And this is a comma separated list. Uh, and you, you can also filter by multiple keywords. So let's say, uh, the way key, uh, the filter works is it's comma separated, but key value pair. So tag equals tutorial, uh, uh, any executor of a generic local SH, and then the type script. And on the left, it shows you the available help, uh, uh, you know, basically the filter and format uh, fields that you have. Okay. We also have, uh, Build test report that's used to show your test uh, results. So upon uh, building a test, uh, 
all of these results are stored in a JSON file. And build test reports is basically coring that JSON file and displaying the test results uh, in a table. We can filter using, like, let's say, state equals some um, pass uh, and filter by, like, let's say, the executor. We can also filter, let's say, by a return code. Uh, let's say return code equals one, and we'll give you all the tests. You can also filter by a name of a test. So let's say I know a name like exit one pass, and it'll show you all those tests. Uh, so, th th so there's a few fields uh, that you can use to filter. Uh, and the format is exactly the same. It's just comma separated list of format fields. And this just shows you those available fields. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of format fields um, that we have. Um, and, and there's still more in the, in the, uh, in the JSON file. So what it's, what it's doing is it's basically extracting these fields. So like you can, for instance, get the command executed, the start time, the end time, uh, the host name, the name of the test, the output file. Um, so there's a lot of format fields, uh, like the tag names, et cetera. Okay. Uh, similar to build test report, there is a command build test inspect. Uh, this is used to inspect the test and it actually uh, gives you more detail into the test. Uh, the way it works is uh, first, uh, I mean, you could do a build test inspect list and it shows you the name of the, all the tests with a unique ID. And um, you can inspect a test based on build test inspect and you can use name and then the name of the test. Uh, and that just shows you uh, an example uh, of the JSON record in the report file. Uh, and you can also uh, inspect based on the ID also if you want. So in this example, there was only one entry for sleep, but if you had multiple entries, it will show you all the, uh, the test entries for this. Um, so we, we also run CI checks, um, you know, whenever um, we have like a pull request to build test. Uh, these CI checks run on GitHub public infrastructure. Um, there are several CI checks. Um, uh, one of the key ones that, that we run is a regression test. Um, and, let, and, and what happens is these regression tests get pushed into CodeCup because uh, we, we, we need to be able to like uh, get coverage result uh, for our tests. And, and some of the features um, that require us to like expand upon uh, or current, uh, like, you know, lack of support in Git, GitHub, uh, you know, based on the environment, we have to use facility hardware. Uh, like for instance, testing Slurm or testing LSF features. So we have facility pipelines, like the Polymer on NERSC and Oak Ridge with a pipeline that runs uh, using the ECP um, uh, CI, uh, you know, infrastructure. And uh, it runs a test and pushes those results back to Cook. So with that being said, I'm going to pass this over to Aditya. Hey, uh, thanks for that. So since we have like a, a brief understanding of how build test works, I wanted to spend some time to talk about how we are using it for applications, right? So I want to talk about two kinds of applications. One is a system check and then one is the so, uh, software stack testing. So coming to the system testing, uh, we have Cori test suite. Cori, for uh, those of you who might be unaware, is the uh, system at NERSC at LBNL. So we use build tests to test both Cori and Perlmutter systems. Uh, it's over 175 tests. And even though the the repository itself sits on GitHub. We sort of mirror it into our uh, GitLab instance at the site, and then we use those to trigger uh, the CI pipeline checks and then push the test results back to CDASH. Uh, next slide, please. So what, what are the sort of tests that we run in the Cori test suite? So there are a broad range of tests. So we have system checks, we have file system checks, 
uh, network checks, tools, some of which are unique to NERSC like IRIS. We check uh, our batch scheduler, which is Slurm. And we also check uh, applications. So one of these applications, E4S, is what we'll talk about in more detail in the software stack testing. Next. All right, so what do these uh, pipelines actually look like? Right, so we're running two daily checks, as you can see. And in the job script, uh, you can see we are using some of the features that Joseph talked about. So you can see we are using the daily tags and then we report only the tests that have failed, right? And these run on a scheduled basis on a, on a, on a daily basis. And that the pipeline overview can be seen in the bottom left. Next slide. So this is what the job trace log sort of looks like uh, at the very end. So you, on the top half of the screen, you can see a few of the tests that we're running, uh, last the file system checks, checking whether nodes are up and those sort of things. Finally, we create a test report using the filter state fail. And then at the very end, you can see that we're using a Python script to push these results to C dash. Next. So the C dash server we're using is public and both of the scheduled pipeline results are being pushed there. And the build names you see uh, on our page correspond to the GitLab job. So one is E4S tests and one is the scheduled system checks. Uh, as you may have noticed, we're using a Python script right now for doing this. So build test currently doesn't have C dash integrated into its framework, but that's something that we're working on. So coming to the actual tests, uh, these are some of the examples of the Slurm tests we're running. So going from the top left in a clockwise fashion. So the top left one, uh, as the description says, it tests the submit limit for a particular queue, which has a submission limit of five. So you can see that the JSON schema is 1.0, the sub schema is script, and the executor is local, right? So essentially in a local shell, we are uh, using a for loop to submit six jobs and we expect the sixth job to fail and we use a regular expression to match the standard error output to the expected fail status. Uh, similarly, the second one, which is the top right, is checking the Slurm version and we start sort of matching the standard out to an expected value. Uh, at NERSC, we provide uh, slum accounting info. So in the bottom right, we are checking uh, whether we are able to get the uh, jobs run within the 31 day mark, which is a field that we have. So anything more than 31 days should result in an error and any uh, spread which is less than 31 days should give us back the results. And then uh, similarly on the bottom left, we're checking another expression uh, in that there's a maximum node limit of uh, how many nodes you can use to submit to a particular partition. And we just submit to more than that to see if it still uh, works. So it's sort of just testing if your system uh, slurm configuration is what you expect it to be, right? Uh, next slide. So similarly, we also do uh, system tests. So going from left to right, the first one is just testing if all the login nodes are up. So we SSH, uh, we test the SSH connection to each of the login nodes. In the second instance, we check the module command functionality. So things like module list, module show, load, unload, those kinds of things. And in the last test, we check the Luster OSTs, uh, Luster MDTs, and just uh, certain LFS commands to see the file system. Next slide. Okay, so those are, that was the system level check. Uh, a lot of you may actually be interested in the 
the software stack testing, right? So we also have something of uh, E4S test suite on Cori. So next slide. So E4S is, uh, as most of you I'm assuming already know, is extreme scale scientific software stack. It's a curated set of uh, software packages. It's obviously a subset of SPAC packages and it's distributed as SPAC manifest containers and build cache. Uh, and it includes a whole host of things like compilers, data and visualization tools, uh, profilers, XSDK, and everything. Uh, next slide. Okay, so what's the Cori E4S testing strategy? Uh, so essentially in Jan of this year, we deployed the E4S 2010 release, uh, which has more than 135 installed specs. And we essentially leverage the upstream E4S test suite to validate our stack since it provides the majority of the tests. So what we did further uh, is we uh, use, we integrated the E4S test into our Cori test suite and then use that to run uh, build test uh, GitLab pipelines, right? Uh, the next release of E4S, which I think is 2102, uh, will utilize SPAC tests, but we still want to develop certain uh, site specific tests that, that utilize the batch queue system, right? And then we can tag all of these together and sort of run a run an E4S test using the tags functionality in build test. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so what is the E4S test suite? The E4S test suite is essentially a bunch of tests uh, which test the coverage of the deployed stack. So on the bottom left, you can see that it's, a, it's hosted on uh, GitHub under the E4S project. And essentially you have a main script called test all dot sh which uh, runs as a standalone program and it can test all the all the software within that stack or you can uh, alternatively provide an argument of which particular test you want to uh, which particular software you want to test so on the bottom right you see uh, how you can use this so you essentially get clone the test suite source a couple of uh, shell scripts essentially uh, and then run the test all that I spoke about. And in this case, we are supplying only the Qthreads argument to check that. So next slide, please. We did run into uh, a few challenges due, uh, for the E4S testing. So what we found is that developers generally have regression tests as part of their CI checks, but they are obviously understandably more interested in running those on only on the bleeding edge but not in testing the uh, deployed e4s stacks at the facilities and uh, getting the tests to run correctly requires some level of site customization which tends to break portability across sites and the e4s test suite we found was provides only one set of compiler wrappers and there's no option to customize them. And obviously a single test repo is not going to work across all the DOE facilities uh, when you want you know, to have site specific tests. Uh, next slide please. So how are we actually testing the E4S tests, right? So we have a, a custom executor to run the E4S stack through a Slurm scheduler. You can see the definition of the custom executor on the left. So essentially it has certain uh, flags for your Slurm submission. And it has a couple of, uh, it has three uh, commands that run in a before script for all of them. So essentially when you want to test something, uh, as you can see on the right, uh, we're testing the, uh, I think it's RDOs. Yeah, we're testing RDOs uh, similar to the Qthreads example that I showed earlier. So in this case, you would just use the executor, uh, E4S executor type, which would source all of the things and use your run section only has the one command. Next slide, please. 
So what are the E4S tests available in built test query? So there are quite a few tests. A lot of them are uh, directly from the upstream and a few of them were contributed by uh, certain ADSE teams. So a good example of that is the Darshan example, which the Darshan team provided to us. And you can see the example on the right, essentially running a basic test on Gori that they customized for us. Uh, next slide, please. So similar to the system level testing, we also push these results to CDASH and uh, it's under the same header, right? So, and it, this is again publicly available. So with that said, I'll hand it back to Shizeb for a demo. Just give me a second, let me share my screen. So we're gonna just briefly go over a few of the things that we um, covered. And for, for this demo, I'm gonna base this on the latest release. So this is the, uh, the documentation. So um, if you're going here, just the latest is the 095. And when you, if you want to like, um, so for this demo, we're going to go into the getting started and actually show you uh, some of this on the terminal, uh, how you actually build tests, how you um, use the build spec, and then uh, go from there. So I have build tests set up here. Um, yes. So the first thing is that we build um, using build test build, right? So one of these tests, um, this is a simple toy example, uh, just to show you that we can build a single test. Um, this is a variable um, declaration. You will see discovered build specs, it will parse them, and then build the test, get a shell script, and then run it, right? Now this build test command, you can actually build for a directory. So let's say I have a directory. I have uh, several examples in this directory uh, and I can actually build all of them. You can see all the tests within this um, directory get built and there was a total of nine tests, five of, them, uh, five of them passed, okay? You can also have uh, multiple um, values um, in build spec using the dash G. So you can like build a whole directory. You can also build a file. So you can see that this one came up here. That was a file, okay? So what else can we do? Um, we can also, um, let's say exclude a file. So I want to build a whole directory and let's say I want to exclude a file. So you can use a dash X option and you see in the output, um, this, this file was excluded. And during the discovery stage, um, what happens is upon like the total um, build specs that we have, um, you know, after discovery and excluded, they get parsed and then built, right? So from that previous example, when we had, I think nine tests, uh, now we're only down to three tests, right? Uh, so that's what this is. Uh, we can also build, oops, we can build by tag. So let's do that. Uh, so I have a simple, Python tag that uh, runs a Python test. There's two of them. And this tags option is used to, uh, you know, just run test. Um, if you don't know where the, the file is, uh, the tag feature is pretty useful, right? Because it, it just picks them up and run them as one collection. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, and I guess you can also, okay, so you can mix and match the tag option with like, let's say uh, one of the files. So same thing, uh, there were, you know, with the same test with Python, uh, we also got the virus tests in here and it runs in. So we get a total of three tests. So we, we kind of ran through most of the build test command. Um, now that we have seen uh, all the builds, we can actually see the results, build test report. Uh, it's a basically a table of all the tests that were stored. You know, it's, it's kind of quite, quite a long output, but it shows you the name of the test, the unique ID, if the test pass or fail, the return code, uh, you know, start end time, and, and many other things, right? Runtime. So within the report field, there's actually several options. So you have, uh, you can filter and format, uh, get the latest and oldest test. So, Let's actually do one of the examples. Um, I'm gonna do, so first thing is maybe let's format the table. So I have name, ID, executor, return, state, and return code. And you can, what happens is with the format, it just formats them in the order of how they were specified. We can also drill down into the tests themselves. So let's say I want to filter all tests, um, let's say by exit one. So I'm gonna do that with this. And you can say exit one, and it will show you all those tests that come up. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you can also filter by let's say a name of a test. So I have a filter on the name. So we should expect to see this exit one come up as the only test. And there you go. Okay. Um, there is actually quite a bit of, um, so if you're, if you're not sure about the filtering format, there is help format, which shows you all the available fields. Okay. Um, Similarly, there is also a help filter that shows you the filter fields. Uh, we talked when we when we did some of the examples like um, for the format, like we we did return code, which is an integer. Uh, you can also filter by let's say tags or the state of the test or whatever um, that you uh, are interested in. Okay. So another useful command is the test inspect. So if you take a look. Um, you can list uh, basically all the test IDs, or you can actually then drill down by an ID using the ID or the name of the test. So let's do like inspect list. It shows you all the name of the test um, and then the IDs, right? So let me just probably build um, a few more tests. You know, I'll maybe just do. You can, uh, this, this directory has like probably about 30 some tests. Right? It, it takes a, a little bit of time, or I guess 46 tests. Uh, it just runs all of them. Um, so now that we have this, um, let's say I want to do exit one pass. Um, so you can filter by and uh, by a name of a test, and you see um, because this test will run multiple times you will see that here um, with the actual JSON um, content of the test, you know, like the ID, the executor, the host name, the user, we, we keep track of several things like the, the name of the test command, the output file, the error file, the tags, the start time. So there's many things um, in here. You can also, let's see, Take one of these IDs, let's say, um, I 
Let's we'll just use this one. So if you want to filter by a specific test, not like all the tests, you can say this, uh, and it'll show you the ID. And the way the IDs work is, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty long ID, but you don't need to specify everything. You could just specify a few letters, uh, make it unique, let's say 989, oh, sorry, ID, and you, you would still get the same output. Okay. So now we want to see what tests are available. You can do build test, build spec. Find is the only command in here. There are several options here. Um, you can run find without anything, and it will show you all the tests. The way it works is it shows you the name of the test, the type, the executor, um, tags, and description. And, and it's pretty uh, useful. Like So when you're writing tests, uh, you would use this command to kind of see what's available uh, in, in your cache, OK? Um, so one of the, the things that's useful is uh, listing all the available tags because you may want to build by a tag. So you can do dash T or list by the executors. Uh, and you can also group them by tag name or executors. So we'll show you some of that. Um, and also getting all maintainers. So let's do that. So it shows you all the tags. Um, let's say we want to run the tag. So I'm on a Mac system, so I could do like Mac. Like that, and, and it will run only this test. Now, if you want to know what this, um, like a grouping of uh, tags by the test name, there is tags. So we could show you all the test names. Uh, so let's say that Mac test was, yeah. Run only Mac OS distro. So that was a test name. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of useful if you want to know what the tests are doing. Uh, so another thing that's useful is you want to filter this um, build spec cache. So you can actually, so first let's do format. So format, let's say I want to just do name and description. So you can actually format the columns of the, of the test. Um, and you can also filter the build spec cache because there may be a lot of tests in the, um, in the build spec. So let me find a command that would be useful. So let's say I want to filter based on a particular tag name. So I could do filter, and this is a key value pair. So tags equals fail. Um, one of the things that's, uh, that, 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 that may happen over time is as you write more tests, you need to rebuild the cache. So there is a build test, build spec, find, rebuild. And what it does is it will update your build spec cache. It will discover all the build specs based on the roots of where you specify. Uh, where to search. They'll validate them, give you a list of all the invalid tests. So there's a total of 93 tests. And then upon uh, validation, it will only show you the ones that are uh, valid. Okay. So that kind of wraps up on the some of the build test features. Uh, now we'll actually talk about one of the tests. So, so we will show you an example of one of the, the tests that does basically a simple check on the root disk usage. Um, we define an environment variable that says uh, if the root disk usage is greater than 90%, or I guess in this threshold, it will report an error. Uh, just doing a DF on slash it and basically getting the, the percentage and checking on the if, if it's greater. If it is, we exit one. If it isn't, exit zero. I mean, it's just going to return the message. So let's just run this test. So I know that I'm not 90%, and it will uh, pass. So you can take this test and say, let's say, inspect name. And you can see in the test, um, this was OK, right? 
So let's go back to the same test and let's just put it to 0% to make sure, that, like, you know, if you want to make it fail, right? So you can see now the output is, is fail. Um, if you rerun the same command, um, so yeah, and then this is the, the last test. And you can see the, the root disk usage is 1%. It's greater than zero, so it failed, right? It got a return code of one and the state was a fail. So I'm just gonna undo what I did. Next, we'll talk about one of the I guess, tutorials example, the compiler. So we have a GNU, GNU uh, Hello World test that kind of does the, the one that we show in the diagram in one of the slides. So we, we will have um, a compiler section, which will do build for all compilers built in GCC or GCC. And yeah, the default dash 01, and then for the GCC 9 and GCC 10, we're gonna use dash 02 and dash 03. Uh, and the source code is this hello, hello, uh, .c. So if you were to build this, we should get three, three tests. Um, one for each compiler. So we see that over here, built-in GCC, the two GCC, um, and each of the tests kind of run, um, they get their unique ID, right? Now, where did these configurations come from? So in, so you can do a build test config view. It will show you the configuration file. Um, the, when you define your configuration, it's, it's in your, home directory dot build tests and there's a config.yaml that you specify. Um, in the compile, so the way it's set up is you have a system, that's the top level um, um, kind of um, declaration of where your system, um, like name of your system. So we provide a generic one that has, uh, that can run on basically any host name. So you can specify a list of host names where you want to run the test. And uh, yeah, you can specify the module tool. So it picks that up, uh, LMOD or environment modules. Uh, and then you define your executors. Uh, but for compilers, we define them over here, right? So you can actually see the compilers using a big and we show you a listing of all the compilers. Um, and the config has, you know, several, several sections in here. You can view the compilers, you can view the executor, you can view the configuration file, you can validate the configuration. So there's many things. Um, one other feature that we also have in build tests is the schemas. So you can use the schema um, command to actually see what available schemas that we have. And you can actually see the JSON content. So in the help, you can pick um, one of the schema with a dash n and see the examples and also the JSON. So let's do that. Let's do script version 1.1. If you want to know the schema, you can use a dash j option and it'll show you the schema um, content. And we also have dash e, which shows you all the examples for the build spec. So there's, um, there's quite a bit, of, uh, I think there's two files, but it shows you the output of all the valid build specs. Uh, and the way, the way you would look at it is like, if you were writing a build spec, you wanna know how to actually uh, make, like uh, to, to know how the schema works. So like, you know, you can have a multi-line run. So that's this right here. You can do a single run. You can declare environment variables uh, using E and B. You can declare variables. And then you know reference them with the dollar, um, you know the shell variables and many other things. Uh, we also provide like you know um, kind of invalid things that you can't do, right? Like you can't have these special characters. We have alpha um, uh, regular expression, but basically alpha, alpha numeric. Uh, you can't have like some kind of like missing bash shell uh, or a missing run section because it's so required. So we have like a typo. Uh, an environment can't be a list, it has to be a key key value pair. So there's many things like this. Um, 
with that being said, I'm going to switch over to some other things that may be useful. Um, so one of the things that's uh, that's kind of useful is um, this documentation on the build spec schema. And if you want to know like a specific uh, keyword, like let's say you want to know uh, one of the schemas, so you can go into let's say this. Uh, let's go to the compiler schema. Uh, you will see all the available type properties. Um, let's say you want to know what source is. Source is the source file for compilation. It has to be a string, right? It, it tells you exactly what, uh, what this is. Um, another maybe interesting one would be like compilers. It's an object. Within the object, if you click, these are the available properties. The, the required property is name because you need to specify uh, what compilers to use. Uh, you can also exclude compilers. Um, so yeah, so on. But, so that's one aspect of, um, of uh, yeah, uh, of the build spec, um, I guess, schema documentation. It's, it's really useful. So this is different from the, uh, the, the public facing documentation which goes over the framework, um, the field specs for, uh, you know, basically uh, just showing you all the available properties. So one of the other things that is, um, that I'd like to show you um, is, well, let's, let, let me show you something, some latest features that we have. So I'm gonna switch to develop branch, update my, configuration. Um, so one of the features that we have in the latest, uh, I guess, tip of develop is C dash is one of the options. So we can actually uh, upload our test to C dash. So let me see if I actually have something. Just build something. Let's say um, code. Well, the way uh, the way C works is you need to have some test built, and then uh, it will upload the test results. Uh, so I'm just gonna make sure that I have something, and you can do C dash upload. So the way it works is um, you have to specify uh, a build name uh, in the site URL. Uh, and the site name is optional. Uh, we have defined it in the configuration. So I'm gonna just show you what this is. Let's just do ECDM demo. It uploads it uh, to the build cache. It gives you a status and a, a build ID. The name of the build is this, the site. Um, so let's actually go over that. So, uh, so yeah, it's right here. Oh no, it's, sorry, it's this project. So here you go. So here is the build entry. It's a laptop um, build name. It has a three test. Um, it shows you the, the three tests that were available and you can actually go into the, the tests. Uh, so there were some uh, recent additions to the CDAX. So we're adding more output, like, um, you know, the user that run it, the host name, the executor, uh, start and end time, the output of the test, the build spec content, the error and the actual content of the script. Okay. Um, yeah, so one other thing I wanna show you is, uh, let me see if this is it. So we can run CI checks um, uh, on the facility. I wanna probably just close this pull request and just reopen it. <laughs> It will run the CI checks on the uh, GitHub infrastructure and also in the facility. And it will take some time, but what, what I wanted to show you is, if I go back a few, um, the C dash checks come up into uh, the site names. So you see GitHub, uh, we also run a query and a send. And uh, yeah, some of these are actually run, just run a few, few days ago. 
Um, so it it, 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 it kind of helps uh, like the, the developers. Um, if, if, if somebody is sending a pull request and they want to see if something failed, they can actually see the test. Uh, so right now there's four, I guess, 14 tests that pass. Uh, so as this pipeline is going, um, we actually have mirrors of these pipelines. Um, yeah, I think mirrors of these pipeline running at the facility, I think. Um, yeah, you can see this right here. This was the, uh, the commit, uh, the little badge running on both of the facility. So this one is Corey. This one is Ascent, and uh, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So I think Aditi had mentioned some of the tests that we have kind of running at the facility. So we'll just kind of briefly go over some of those tests. Um, this is kind of a daily system checks. So we run um, several things like partitions, um, we have a tool called my quota, um, something like SACCT or the Slurm accounting, GPFS checks, uh, Slurm um, cluster, uh, checking if the nodes are kind of in a down state and several of them. So let's actually maybe go into one of the tests, let's say module version. So we wanna make sure the modules that we provide um, work. So this is the test. Uh, it specs a version 3.2.1, 11.4, right? Um, so this one, um, I guess, I mean, there, it's passing with a with this return code zero, right? Uh, and it finds this regular expression in this output um, in standard error, right? So you can also, um, let's say like login nodes, this is pretty, Common. So this is just doing a ping on the login nodes. We have 12 login nodes in this section. And then you can see in the output is doing like uh, pinging all of the login nodes. Right? Um, and, you know, another maybe kind of useful thing is like, well, if, if you're using Slurm as your scheduler, um, you want to make sure the Slurm controller is available, right? So we know what our Slurm controller is. We want to make sure we can ping it uh, in this lookup, whatever. Um, so it shows you that right here. So, so we, what I'm trying to say is that we test very specific components of the system stack and also the software stack. Um, I go back actually to build tags. No, not this one. To so if you, um, yeah, give me a second, a few days ago. So the E4S test is run on a weekly basis. So we have one right here. I think this one, so this one ran all of our tests. So if, 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 if you see one of the products that you are involved with, um, we have, running here, so E4S, so you have Hyper, UP, CXX, Cocos, um, and these are running from the E4S upstream, right? And they're available. So let's maybe take a look at Cocos. So um, the way that all the tests work is um, it, it, it does a compile and run. Um, so this is what the E4S test suite gives you in the output. And if, if the return code is a zero, then it passes. Um, that's how um, the output is. Uh, we can also link back to the CI job. So um, that's uh, also pretty useful and just shows you where, where it is. So I think that wraps up the demo. I'm going to see if I can pull back the slides. Can you see my slides? Or you can not. 
uh, I can still see your GitLab pipeline. How about now? Yep, I can see it now. It's the slide deck? Okay. All right. So just talk about, um, I guess, uh, this is just a graph of uh, uh, our user hits um, break down by city. So um, you know, people are, are, I guess, looking at our documentation. So mo most of them are you know, in the US and uh, also parts of Europe and kind of uh, Southeast Asia. Um, just shows you kind of a uh, kind of active users. So I mean, right now, um, you know, active trend, you know, active users on a monthly basis. Um, I mean, it's growing over time. Uh, so you like to see it. Um, this is about six months of data. Um, so I think close to about seventy-five users reading the documentation. Uh, and then yeah, um, like on number of people that actually uh, see the sites. I mean, on a monthly basis. Uh, I think we're, we're seeing a growing trend, getting close to about 500 uh, agents. So what's next? So um, if you, as you may know, uh, E4S 2010 was available on Cori. Uh, it had up to about 135 specs. Uh, we also published our user documentation. Uh, you can find it here on, on this link. And uh, you know, one of the things that, 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 that would help us is, uh, if, if you have one of the products installed in E4S, uh, you, you would like to um, get your contribution and you know, basically a custom script um, that tests your software. Um, and you can look at our contribution guide. Uh, if, we all, uh, if you want to um, you know, test your package, if you have like an equivalent spec test um, command to run the test, um, that, that would be also fine. We are building E4S 2102 um, you know, at all three of our facilities. So it's um, once that's deployed, I mean, we would also want to test that um, stack. Okay. So I just want to wrap up uh, closing remarks. Um, so we kind of show what build test is. It's, it's a framework. You know, it helps you automate building and running of the tests uh, through build specs, um, which define your tests. You know, these tests have to be developed at the facility hardware, right? Because um, we want to make sure that they run correctly. And uh, that, that's very, um, and in order for them to run correctly, they have to be very much like site specific. Right? Uh, if, you know, we, we leverage other tools, testing tools um, like E4S test suite, which we showed um, on how we test our, our Cori stack. Uh, in the future, we'll plan to also run with SPAC tests uh, against our deploy stack and then get all that result in C Dash. Right. However, we also need site customization. So, on the facility side, uh, it's not just the E4S stack that we want to test, but we want to test the whole system itself. That includes uh, you know, the system, uh, system stack, the scheduler, the file system. Uh, anything else that you may have on your, on your site. Uh, if you want you know, um, you know, to get started on a facility, um, what you need to do is basically configure build tests for your site um, in that configuration file. You wanna basically host your repository somewhere to start uh, writing your tests. Uh, you know, it could be anything uh, like GitHub, GitLab, and then pick some version of build test you want to use. So, you know, if you want to use the develop, like the bleeding edge, that's that um, that that may be appropriate. Um, if you want to have the latest feature, or if you want to have a stable branch, you can use a master or some tag. We have some links to get uh, to help you get started. Um, if if you're new um, uh, to, uh, I guess, testing and build tests. Okay. And uh, we also have some references. Um, you know, uh, if you are interested, you know, please do uh, you know check out the uh, project to start you know, start it, fork it, um, join the Slack channel. That's that's probably the best way, uh, I guess, to get in touch and uh, need help. And uh, with that, I 
just want to just uh, give you thanks uh, for joining and uh, you know, ECP um, for helping us support the project. Thank you. And we'll open it up now for questions. So I think there were a couple of questions in the chat that David had. Uh, I think most of them got answered in like the subsequent slides in the process of the slide deck. Yes. So I think we have a question. Uh, I might have missed it, but is there a way to support uh, test order? Um, I, I would assume you uh, are referring to like test dependence. Is that right? Maybe Paul, you can uh, elaborate. Sure. I'll just, uh, yeah, if I, if I have a series of tests and, and I want them to always execute as test one, then two, then three, is that, is that supported by by default, or is there a configuration I would have to kind of think about? So um, right now, um, so I think within a build spec file, uh, you can define more than one task. And they all run, uh, they, they all run together, um, one after the other. And I think we can have a, a dependency between the build spec, like within a test itself. So within a, one single test, you can say one test um, needs to wait until another test has passed or failed to trigger a downstream test. Uh, that has um, that 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 feature is um, not available yet, but it's uh, there is an open issue for that. Um, but I, I can see your point, like, um, let's say a test pass and then triggers a downstream test that will only trigger if it pass, um, or maybe a branching where one test fails and then it triggers a, something else. Okay, that, that, thank you. And also to sort of elaborate on that, all of the all of their tests run concurrently. So I think that would need a little bit of fixing as well to work in the dependency feature. So um, I think you can all mute, unmute yourself. I wasn't sure if um, you have any, any questions, please speak up, don't be shy. Or if, uh, if there are any, to put it more broadly, uh, are you interested in the system checks or software checks or if there if there is any specific feature that you would be interested in that's sort of like a hurdle to implementation if that is a sort of product question i guess we'll start off maybe christian deepak we um maybe tell a bit about yourself, what makes you interested in, I guess, testing or? I've been just listening into what's going on. 
Yeah, me too. I think I kind of uh, joined a little late. Uh, so yeah, maybe if the slides are made available uh, after mm -hmm. the presentation, I will probably, it'll be useful. Yes, they will be available. Great, thank you so much. This, the slides are available on uh, Confluence and essentially the demo uh, that Shazab did is part of the getting started guide. So mm -hmm. the documentations are probably the best resource if you have any questions to get started. Obviously, you can reach out to any of us. Got it. Yep. Thank if you. If you have any issues. Yeah. And, and, and this session is um, going to be recorded, so a video will be available. Um, Great. Thank you. Uh, maybe I guess uh, you could tell me about yourself. Um, and what what what's your role? I guess you know, as part of ECP, um, this team are you guys in? Christian, uh, Yuka. Oh, I am in the MFIX EXA team. Uh, so we are building a CFD DEM code uh, that's uh, capable of modeling a uh, chemical looping reactor. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, we uh, have a uh, repo in GitLab, I guess, and uh, we do have some GitLab tests and also some integration tests. 